Well, well, well. Would you look who it is? Flex. Now, it has been a long time since I've uploaded. I think about six or seven months. Honestly, I'm not the most consistent, but hopefully this video is going to be a very useful one and kickstart my uploads again. So yeah, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to resolve this common issue with Adobe Photoshop, where it basically tells you that your scratch disks are too full. Never had that problem before, uh, but it seems to be quite a common issue with Photoshop because I did try a lot of videos and none of them worked, unfortunately. So in the end, I actually realized I have a really good software on my server that I use to basically get the stats of my disk usage. And that software is really good. And ultimately, that's what I use to resolve this. Now, a video like this, I generally would upload it to my software channel, which is called Software Basics. But I decided to upload it to my main channel because there's a lot more subscribers here. And ultimately, that's a lot more people that I will help because of the views that I will get. So yeah, if it does help you out, do make sure to leave a like down below. And of course, I would really, really appreciate if you guys could subscribe to Software Basics as well. There's a lot of video tutorials that I've created to resolve certain issues. Well, a lot of issues on Windows and other type of software as well. So yeah, it might be useful to you in future and I would really appreciate it if you guys do subscribe. But yeah, without further ado and less talking, let's head over to my editing PC and I'll show you guys how to resolve this issue. All right, so what I'm going to do is first illustrate the issue and then we'll resolve it. Um, you can see here my local disk has more than 50% of free space available. Now, if I open up Photoshop and then I try to drag an image over to my canvas, you can see it's already open, Photoshop is fine, but this is where the problem occurs, for me anyway. Basically, when you get this message, if we head back over to our file explorer, and you can now see my local disk, there's only six gigs free. Now, that doesn't make sense at all. Now, if I press OK and then go back, refresh file explorer you can see it's back to its originals now obviously at this point you definitely know that photoshop is the issue so now what we basically need to do is figure out where all that usage is coming from so to do that what we need is that wonderful software that i was talking about it is called winderstat and this is an abbreviation for windows directory statistics and Winderstat is a free and open source graphical disk usage analyzer from Microsoft Windows. So you put that into Google and then you go to download and on the download page, head over to the section where it says list of all official download mirrors. I usually use SourceForge, so click on that. And this will load up in about five seconds. And after this, it'll bring a pop-up for you to download the software. Now, if this doesn't work straight away, you can refresh the page and then this pop-up should come up. So once you have it downloaded and installed, you just need to go ahead and open it up. Now, initially, you'll see this window. Just make sure you select your C drive, basically the drive that your um, Photoshop is installed. Now, before you go ahead and press OK, make sure you have Photoshop opened and make sure you've already put in like an image and got the prompt for scratch disks or two fulls. So now you can select your drive that your Photoshop is installed and then press OK. Try not to select all the other ones because it does take some time to load. And I'll show you that here. So it's going to take a while. Now mine took, like I said, about five minutes. Now you need to wait till the loading bar gets to the end before you'll start to actually see. Now while this is loading, you can see here there are some um, tabs for information. Size is the most important one. You want to make sure you filter from the highest to the lowest. Uh, you can see already my users folder is being the highest so far in the top two. It ultimately will become the highest once this is all loaded up. And we'll just actually close this up. And now I'll show you guys what it looks like when it's fully loaded. Now this, you can see as I click on them, it's heading over to this location. Now initially yours should look like this with everything closed up. But then when you click on the one with the biggest, basically this is what takes up the most space on your computer. And you can see that's heading straight for a folder called temp. And they're all Photoshop. 
So what you can now do is right click on this and you can say copy part or you can right click and say explore here. And you can see it will open in Windows File Explorer. Now at this point what you could do is delete pretty much everything but I wouldn't recommend that because a lot of your other software would be in this location. But yeah, the easiest way to just get rid of all those files is to just select. You can see the top four highest are Photoshop. So what you can do is just basically right click and I would recommend you delete where it says no way to undelete. So this is a permanent delete and just go ahead and delete all four of them. Okay, so those files actually ended up crashing my recording software when I was deleting them. But you can see now um, after sorting, we don't have the Photoshop files showing up at the top in the temp folder. And we'll just confirm this with Photoshop. And if we head over and grab that same picture again, and we put it on our canvas, you should see the message doesn't come up anymore. And then if we head back over to File Explorer and we go to this PC, you can see nothing changes even if we refresh. Uh, that's pretty much it for this part. Now, of course, most of you can just go directly to the temp folder, but it mightn't be the case that, you know, the temp folder is where this uh, is causing this issue. It might be somewhere else, but that's the whole point of having Winderstat. All right, so that pretty much concludes the video. I hope this does help you out. And for Mac users, unfortunately, I wasn't able to help you in this particular video. There might be something similar to Mac for Winderstat as well. I will check that out once I finish recording this. And if there is, I'll attach that to the description as well. So yeah, final thing to do is to just say, please do subscribe to my other channel once again, which is Software Basics. And of course, subscribe to this channel also. If you have any questions at all, leave it down in the comment section below. Absolutely smash the like button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.